Hello, and this is Matthew from Simply Learn, and we're going to be covering Ansible today as one of the key tools that you would have within your DevOps environment. So the things that we're going to go through today is we're going to cover why you would want to use a product like Ansible, what Ansible really is and how it's of value to you and your organization, the differences between Ansible and other products that are similar to it on the market and what makes Ansible a compelling product, and then we're going to dig into the architecture for Ansible. We're going to look at how you would create a playbook, how you'd manage your inventory of your server environments, and then what is the actual workings of Ansible. As a little extra, we're going to also throw in Ansible Tower, one of the secret source solutions that you can use for improving the speed and performance of how you create your Ansible environments. And finally, we're going to go through a use case by looking at Hootsuite, a social media management company, and how they use Ansible to really improve the efficiency within their organizations. So let's jump into this. So the big question is, why Ansible? So you have to think of Ansible as another tool that you have within your DevOps environment for helping manage the servers. And this definitely falls on the operations side of the DevOps equation. So if we look here, we have a picture of Sam. And like yourselves, Sam is a system administrator. And he is responsible for maintaining the infrastructure for all the different servers within his company. So some of the servers that he may have that he has to maintain could be web servers running Apache. They could be database servers running uh, MySQL. And if you only have a few servers, then that's fairly easy to maintain. I mean, if you have three web servers and two database servers, and let's face it, wouldn't we all love just to have one or two servers to manage? It would be really easy to maintain. The trick, however, is as we start increasing the number of servers, and this is a reality of the environments that we live and operate in, it becomes increasingly difficult to create consistent setup of different infrastructures such as web servers and databases for the simple reason that we're all human as if we had to update and maintain all of those servers by hand there's a good chance that we would not set up each server identically now this is where ansible really comes to the rescue and helps you become an efficient operations team ansible like other system solutions such as chef and puppet uses code that you can write and describe the installation and setup of your servers. So you can actually repeat it and deploy those servers consistently into multiple areas. So now you don't have to have one person redoing and refollowing setup procedures. You just write one script and then each script can be executed and have a consistent environment. So we've gone through why you'd want to use Ansible. Let's step through what Ansible really is. So, you know, this is all great, but, you know, how do we actually use these tools in our environment? So Ansible ha is a tool that really allows you to create and control three key areas that you would have within your operations environment. First of all, there's IT automation. So you can actually write instructions that automate the IT setup that you would typically do manually in the past. The second is the configuration and having consistent configuration. Imagine setting up hundreds of Apache servers and being able to guarantee with precision that each of those Apache servers is set up identically. And then finally, you want to be able to automate the deployment so that as you scale up your server environment, you can just push out instructions that can deploy automatically different servers the bottom line is you want to be able to speed up and make your operations team more efficient. So let's talk a little bit about pull configuration and how it works with Ansible. So there are two different ways of being able to set up uh, different environments for server farms. Uh, one is to have a key server that has all the instructions on. And then on each of the servers that connect to that main master server, you would have a piece of software known as a client installed on each of those servers that would communicate to the main master server and then would periodically either update or change the configuration of the slave server. This is known as a pull configuration. An alternative is a push configuration. And the push configuration is slightly different. 
The main difference is as with a pool configuration, you have a master server where you actually put up the instructions. But unlike the pool configuration where you have a client installed on each of the services, with a push configuration, you actually have no client installed on the remote servers. You simply are pushing out the configuration to those servers and forcing a restructure or a fresh clean installation in that environment. So Ansible is one of those second environments where it's a push configuration server. And this contrasts with other popular products like Chef and Puppet, which have a master slave um, architecture with a master server connecting with a client on a remote slave environment where you would then be pushing out the updates. With Ansible, you're pushing out the service and the structure of the server to remote hardware and you are just putting it onto the hardware irrelevant of the structure that's out there. And there are some significant advantages that you have in that, in that you're not having to have the extra overhead weight of a client installed on those remote servers, having to constantly communicate back to the master environment. So let's step through the architecture that you would have for an Ansible environment. So when you're setting up an Ansible environment, the first thing you want to do is have a local machine. And the local machine is where you're going to have all of your instruction and really the power of the control that you'd be pushing out to the remote server. So the local machine is where you're going to be starting and doing all of your work. Connected from the local machine are all the different nodes pushing out the different configurations that you would set up on the local machine. The configurations that you would write, and you would write those in code, are within a module. So you do this on your local machine for creating these modules, and each of these modules is actually consistent playbooks. The local machine also has a second job, and that job is to manage the inventory of the nodes that you have in your environment. The local machine is able to connect to each of the different nodes that you would have in your hardware network through SSH clients, so a secure client. Let's dig into some of the different elements within that architecture. And we're going to take a first look at playbooks that you would write and create for the Ansible environments. So the core of Ansible is the playbook. This is where you create the instructions that you write to define the architecture of your hardware. So the playbook is really just a set of instructions that configure the different nodes that you have. And each of those set of instructions is written in a language called YAML. And this is a standard language used for configuration server environments. Did you know that YAML actually stands for YAML 8 Markup Language? That's just a little tidbit to hide behind your ear. So let's have a look at what one of these playbooks it looks like. And here we have a sample uh, YAML script that we've written. So you start off your YAML script with three dashes, and that indicates the start of a script. And then the script itself is actually consistent of two distinct plays. At the top, we have play one, and below that, we have play two. Within each of those plays, we define which nodes are we targeting. So here we have a web server in the top play, and in the second play, we have a database server that we're targeting. And then within each of those server environments, we have the specific tasks that we're looking to execute. So let's step through some of these tasks. We have an install Apache task, we have a start Apache task, and we have an install MySQL task. And when we do that, we're going to actually execute a specific set of instructions. And those instructions can include installing Apache and then setting the state of the Apache environment or starting the Apache environment and setting up and running the MySQL environment. So this really isn't too complicated. And that's the really good thing about working with YAML is it's really designed to make it easy for you as an operations lead to be able to configure the environments that you want to consistently create. So let's take a step back though. We have two hosts. We have web server and database server. Where do these names come from? Well, this takes us into our next stage and the second part of working with Ansible, which is the inventory management part of Ansible. So the inventory part of Ansible is where we maintain the structure of our network environment. So what we do here is part of the structure in creating different nodes is we've had to create two different nodes here. We have a web server node and a database server node. And under web server node, we actually have the names 
that we're actually pointing to specific machines within that environment. So now when we actually write our scripts, all we have to do is refer to either web server or database server, and the different servers will have the instructions from the YAML script executed on them. This makes it really easy for you to be able to just point to new services without having to write out complex instructions. So let's have a look at how Ansible actually works in real world. So the real world environment is that you'd have the Ansible software installed on a local machine, and then it connects to different nodes within your network. On the local machine, you'll have your first, your playbook, which is the set of instructions for how to set up the remote nodes. And then to identify how you're going to connect to those nodes, you'll have an inventory. We use secure SSH connections to each of the servers. So we are encrypting the communication to those servers. We're able to grab some basic facts on each server. So we understand how we can then push out the playbook to each server and configure that server remotely. The end goal is to have an environment that is consistent. So let's ask you a simple question. What are the major opportunities that Ansible has over Chef and Puppet? Really like to hear your answers in the comments below. Pop them in there and we'll get back to you and really want to hear how you feel that Ansible is a stronger product or maybe you think it's a weaker product as it compares to other similar products in the market. Here's the bonus. We're going to talk a little bit about Ansible Tower. So Ansible Tower is an extra product that Red Hat created that really kind of puts the cherry on the top of the ice cream or is the icing on your cake. Ansible by itself is a command line tool. However, Ansible Tower is a framework that was designed to access Ansible. And through the Ansible Tower framework, we now have an easy to use GUI. This really makes it easy for non-developers to be able to create the environment that they want to be able to manage in their DevOps plan without having to constantly work with the command prompt window. So instead of opening up terminal window or a command window and writing out complex instructions only in text, you can now use drag and drop and mouse click actions to be able to create your appropriate playbooks, inventories and pushes for your nodes. All right, so we've talked a lot about Ansible. Let's take a look at a specific company that's using Ansible today. And in this example, we're going to look at Hootsuite. Now, Hootsuite, if you've not already used their products and they have a great product, Hootsuite is a social media management system. They are able to help with you managing your pushes of social media content across all of the popular social media platforms. They're able to provide the analytics. They're able to provide the tools that marketing and sales teams can use to be able to assess a sentiment analysis of the messages that are being pushed out. Really great tool and very popular. But part of their popularity drove a specific problem straight to Hootsuite. The challenge they had at Hootsuite is that they had to constantly go back and rebuild their server environment. And they couldn't do this continuously and be consistent. There was no standard documentation and they had to rely on your memory to be able to do this consistently. Imagine how complex this could get as you're scaling up with a popular product that now has tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of users. This is where Ansible came in and really helped the folks over at Hootsuite. Today, the DevOps team at Hootsuite write out playbooks that have specific instructions that define the architecture and structure of their hardware nodes and environments and are able to do that as a standard product. Instead of it being a problem in scaling up their environment, they now are able to rebuild and create new servers in a matter of seconds. The bottom line is Ansible has been able to provide Hootsuite with IT automation, consistent configuration, and free up time from the operations team so that instead of managing servers, they're able to provide additional new value to the company. So here are some key takeaways. We've gone through why you'd want to have a product such as Ansible to be able to manage 
the growing environment that you'd have within your network. We've looked specifically at the three key areas of success for Ansible around IT automation, consistent configuration management, and the ability to be able to automatically deploy new software to new servers or even rebuild existing servers. We compared Ansible from a pull and push configuration environment, how it compares with other products such as Chef and Puppet that are also popular and used for providing a consistent and similar service. We broke down the architecture of Ansible and looked at how the local machine really is critical at pushing out the instructions that you have within your playbook that are managed within your modules and how you use the inventory to be able to manage the actual physical hardware available on your network. Finally, we looked at how you would set up a physical Ansible environment within your network and looked at the additional tools that are being developed by Red Hat for Ansible, including the new Ansible Tower GUI interface to make it so much easier for you to be able to build the instructions and playbooks needed to be able to create consistent Ansible environments. And finally, we looked at a use case from Hootsuite and how Ansible really helped them out tremendously to improve the efficiency of their DevOps team. So I hope you found this informative. Give us your opinions on how Ansible competes with Chef and Puppet. We'd really be interested in hearing your comments below. If you liked this video, hit the subscribe button and then follow it up with the bell so you're always getting updated on the latest videos that we release from Simply Learn. This is Matthew signing off.